series is incredible and gripping, timely, and there's been so much talk about it. Now, you played Doris. Could you tell me about what was it with this project that attracted you to this, and especially Doris? What was it that you loved about Doris? Of course. So when I first got the audition for the show, I didn't receive the script. I just got my size and a little, like, character description. So going into the project, I didn't know much about it. Um, but when I got the role, I just learned, uh, I, I got the script, so I learned more about who Doris was. And it was really intriguing to me to be able to play someone who is this kind of proper, you know, proper lady, if you will, and especially in the 50s, being able to wear those cool costumes, that was really intriguing to me, and, and being able to depict some of the terrors that the Emory faced and that really any African American family faced um, in the 50s or even today. So as you were saying, you didn't really know what it was you was auditioning for at first. So when you fully was able to read the script and you fully found out everything, what was your initial thoughts going in? Was it a bit scared to tackle this kind of subject, or was it met with like such great honor to be able to be in this? I th think it was the latter. I was definitely honored to be able to be a part of this show just because the screenwriting by Little Marvin is fantastic. I mean, reading the script, I knew it was going to be an amazing show, mm -hmm. but watching the screen, all that hard work and all that effort that went into the making of the show really came off and it was just yeah I was really excited to you know delve into that as well. Now on the show like I said you play Doris you're kind of like the friend we use that in, in air quotations um <laughs> you don't really know what the motive is at first um but working with this this horror series we don't really fully know the character as we until you know more episodes proceed what was either the research or the mental state that you got yourself into for playing this horror, in a horror series? Uh, I think it was really all about separating myself from the character. You know, it's hard to, especially whenever you're a part of the audience, you you watch the show, you'll be like, oh, I hate that girl. And, you know, sometimes that stigma sticks with it, meaning, like, I hate that character that you played, right. and therefore I hate that actress. But I think for me, it was all about, you know, separating. I'm, I'm going into work, and I'm playing Doris, but really I'm Sophie Guest, and it's separating those, like, those harsh things that I really have to, like, act out and have to say. And it's just kind of uncomfortable for me to say, right. um, but I have to, you know, separate from my job from who I really am, you know. You could describe Doris as manipulative. I felt that it came off she was manipulative in, in, in the yes. show. Um, what would you say about her that, it, do you feel that she was misunderstood or that she had, she knew exactly what she was doing and her manipulation was used to get to that point of, of kind of breaking um, the character? Of course, I think she knew exactly what she was doing. I mean, from the get-go, she really just wanted to befriend Ruby Lee, and um, but not in the to be her friend. You know, she wanted to get off her good side and make her ch Ruby Lee trust her as much as she could. Because whenever Ruby Lee at least like didn't expect it, right. you know, that stabbed her in the back. So I think she knew exactly what she was doing in those manipulative words she said and how she twisted them I, she definitely knew what she was doing right now what i do love is the interaction that you have with the actress who plays ruby lee was there any kind of bonding methods that happened beforehand uh we just kind of uh we met on set and she shot is so sweet um such a, a great girl to work with and you know act with on screen of course um we just kind of it was more of the bonding in between takes and you know, it's it kind of, I, I think it helps us, like, on screen show that, like, this is them actually first meeting, because the first time we, the, first, the second episode, that was the first time we actually met, so we kind of, our, our characters were developing, like, you know, we were meeting each other, and we were getting closer and closer, but in real life, that was actually happening, too, so, you know, we'd make TikToks <laughs> in between takes, you know, we just, like, try to make the most of it, even though it is such a horror show, we were trying to make, uh, make it as, as light as we could whenever we weren't filming. Right. Now, because this is a horror show, I was wondering, say, would you tackle this role differently? Or just in general, how do you tackle horror 
differently than say if it was a drama or a comedy. The main thing that I did was just felt like dramatic or more like doll-like movements. I guess you could say with my with my body and like how I held myself. Whereas the drama, I would try to make it, especially since I'm I'm playing a character who you know isn't isn't necessarily real. Um, it's, it's really just exaggerating those certain aspects. Where whereas if it was just a drama, I would try to play it much more natural. So since I'm playing Doris, I, I really try to exaggerate those you know those eye movements and those little picks of the head that I did and those like eerie smiles. I was watching um, I was watching an interview the other day of Allison Hill who plays Betty on the show and she was talking about how her smile was really like a staple for her character and I, I totally agree. Like the smile that she had freaked me out to the core <laughs> and I I think that that's a good example of like what I mean by like those exaggerating things that throw you into that horror aspect. There's a lot of different characters on the show. So I was wondering, as Doris, was there a particular actor or a scene that you would have loved to have been in? That is a great question. I think that a scene that I would have loved to do, not necessarily be in, but just see the film, would be watching um, whenever Lucky and Ray slaps uh, Betty across the face. Right. And like she marches over saying, like, I'm done with this. Like, I <laughs> would have loved to just be like a fly on the wall because as you should slap her across the face, she was annoying me, though. You know? Like, Betty, come on! <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, a lot has been said about the series, but what does them mean to you? I definitely think that was a very a huge learning experience for me, just in the history context of it. Um, I, of course, knew about segregation in the 50s, and I knew that, but I didn't know to what extent. So this series was really uh, interesting to me to learn more about the terrors that African-American families faced in the 50s and still today. Um, and that's what them really meant to me was learning all of that and learning that horror and watching the show come up uh, on screen and feeling that pain and that anger um, just as I was watching it was really a, a big deal for me. Right. Now, when you watch the, the, t the series over, are you able to separate yourself from the character or that experience and just watch it as a viewer? I am. Uh, you know, whenever I come on screen, like I, I was watching it with my um, with my family, of course, and they they're all like, mm, they're all like Shh, I want to see what happens." You know, like I'm trying because I, I I've read the scripts, of course, and everything, but still, I'm like, oh, "What happens next?" I really like get interested, even though I'm, I know what comes next, of course. <laughs> right now, with this being a horror um, anthology. When you're reading the script, are you someone who visualizes, or do you just go with that feeling? That's a great question. I think I do a little bit of both. It's kind of like reading a book for me. Like, whenever I'm reading a book, like, I, I think, like, oh, this is what the character will look like. This is, like, the motions that they'll do. They'll go from point A to point B. And then I also try to feel those feelings. Um, whenever I'm reading a script, you know, I'll think, of course, there's, like, the stage direction and everything, but I, I try to think, like, this is how it's going to feel like whenever I'm in that scene and this is what that scene's gonna look like. I think I do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Now, when watching this uh, series, what would you say would be the most striking kind of descriptions to you? If you could describe this using the three words, what would you say? Ooh, I would say, I mean, I guess it's two words, but like psychological, psychologically terrifying. <laughs> is that like, I think that's a good like sum up of that. Um, I think, Traumatic would be another great word to describe it. Um, I think the psychological, like, is terrifying is a, is, a, is a good, like, overview of, of the show if you were going to watch it the first time. Right. So what does Doris bring to you as an actress? Oh, I think that Doris really, you know, it was really stepping outside of my comfort zone whenever I was playing Doris because, you know, she is so different than I am. So having to, like, step out of my comfort zone and say those things Say like you know one of my lines was was you're really pretty for a colored girl, which is off is an awful thing to say, and it, was, it did make me step out of my comfort zone to say that. Um, I would say like just having, even though uh, I mean it's not necessarily the right kind of courage. I would say Doris kind of brought me that kind of courage and, and bravery to step out of, outside of my comfort zone and say things that weren't necessarily nice or the right things to say. Is there any word on a season two that you can say? I haven't heard. I, I mean, I know there is going to be. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, I I am not a 
going where yet and what is going to happen, but I am, I'm just really excited to see what's going to come next. Okay. If, if uh, you were able to give uh, another season, what would you like for the anthology to go to next? I don't know what like, the, the next season holds, but I would say it would be very cool to see the show kind of transfer to like a different era. I know that's something that I'm really excited for. Um, if it's if it does happen, you know, maybe we go from the 50s to the 60s or, or the 70s, you know, switch it up like that. Um, as for characters and things like that, I think I I think I think should uh, keep my ideas on the down low for right. now because I'm not sure what's to come. Understood, understood. Now for you as an actress, is there a particular role or genre that you would love to tackle? Yes, definitely something like like romance I mean I, I'm still 15 but I'm getting into that age group or like coming of age drama I really like those um, types of like movies to not only watch but I think it'd be really cool to act in one of those well. right. now you said you're only 15 I was one you've been acting for a while now but what would you say has been a really great lesson that you've been able to apply to your career? I think something that the acting industry, and the industry, not only acting, but just growing up in this industry itself, I think would be learning how to have confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, I struggled, struggled with that, and I still struggle with that today, um, of having confidence, but having so many auditions over the years and, you know, being let down by some and being brought right back up by others, I think learning that there is only one me and, and no one else can be me has really helped um, with my confidence. And that's one of the major lessons I've learned to just walk in a room with confidence and know that no one else can be me because, you know, there's, there's only one me at the end of the day, you know? Right. I completely understand. I love that. That's amazing. And that shows, you know, just growth overall, just in every experience yeah. that you take. And I really loved you in this series as well. You scared me. Thank and you I, so much. I mean that in the best way. Well, I, I did my job. <laughs> yes, you did. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Likewise, Dana. It was lovely, uh, lovely talking to you. No problem.